dun, dun. Oh, oh god dun, 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 dun. oh what is it dun, 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 dun. oh the, the algos are coming dun, 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 dun. Oh, 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 oh did you think i can use the actual song no of course not copyright but let's use that important intro as an intro back into our series about algorithms and ai and robots just taking over markets what's gonna happen skynet alexa I remember this topic they were going over was all sparked by this article that Alex shared. I will link to that article with the link to the article down below in another link. A Russian doll thing of links. You're gonna enjoy it. You know, but we've been talking about what could possibly happen with these algos in the market. But we never really went over exactly what the algos are being used for. So let's backtrack a little bit and go over that topic. So this very smart anonymous algo trader explains that there's at least two major domains in which algorithms dominate. The first is algorithmic trading which focuses on market microstructures so microstructures in the market are basically just how stocks are being bought and sold but in micro time so like in milliseconds so he says that these computers are basically algos that make split second automated decisions on how to buy and sell based off the microstructures that are already there should you buy a whole bunch of shares at once should you split up your purchases over time basically the algos are trying to figure out how to intelligently execute trades and they're doing it on a small, small time frame. So there's a lot of hedge funds and traditional banks that try to make money off those transactions. Now, these are things that a human cannot do. This space is too micro. You need the computer. So rest assured, you don't have to worry about these guys as much, even though they do change how the market works. So maybe you do have to worry about them a little bit because if you get a whole bunch of algos all trading on these little micro transactions, well, a lot of little transactions start making bigger trends in the market, right? Now, the other domain, which this guy says he's more focused on is systematic investing or it's also called quantitative investing. And this is more of what I do with the NASDAQ All-Stars, which if you're not sick of me talking about yet, I will link to a video right here that explains more about it. It's all systematic with the TSI and measuring momentum with the algorithm that measures the regression of the stock and it takes that data and ranks it. But anyway, more in that video. So this systematic investing uses algorithms to allocate money systematically based on data. So back in the day, this was very simple, quantitative investing. Back in the 1950s, it all started with modern portfolio theory, which was basically just rules for retirement. And this is the 60-40 stock split that they still use today. You know, 60% of your money in stocks and 40% in bonds. But of course, nowadays that allocation shifts depending on where you are in your life. If you're young, you might have a lot more in stocks than you do in bonds versus a guy who's about to retire, you know, because the risk is different. But that all comes from this modern portfolio theory. So these rules were supposed to help people decide how much of their money to put into stocks and how much into bonds. And once you create those rules, you'd basically be allocating money across stocks and bonds with some defined frequency automatically. You don't need a human to go in there and screw with it because it's already set and it's just working. So he says this framework was rapidly adopted across investment portfolios at every scale from mutual funds for individual investors to asset allocation decisions by the largest funds in the world. And obviously they improved it from the simple 60-40. They can allocate to a much finer Minor degree of granularity because they have all this data you know now so you're not just making rules that determine the overall mix of stocks and bonds in a portfolio but those rules are also determining which stocks which bonds which commodities which corn futures they're just getting very specific and it all becomes far more complex so he explains here, like I was saying before, modern portfolio theory was simply just 60% to large cap stocks and 40% to bonds. But then as things got more advanced, people started measuring for risk and return. So you could run a big optimization that promotes diversification that would maximize the return you make per unit of risk. So they're doing risk adjusted returns, which is kind of like what happens with the risk parity model that we've talked about before that Dalio made popular. So in that risk parity model, you're allocating funds to different asset classes based on the volatility. So so something is more volatile like stocks you might allocate less money there versus something like bonds which is less volatile and you add more money there and with risk parity you want each asset class basically producing the same return and you're adjusting that based on how much you put in each asset class and its volatility that way you get true diversification of risk and that's a simple way to do it but it's like a smarter allocation system than the normal 60 40 and then if you're Bridgewater you take that risk parity system to a whole new level because they're not just using simple volatility to see where to put their assets they're judging risk based off factors we don't even know about it's all proprietary but supposedly you know they're so systematic that their machine can trade without any human intervention for the next 
100 years because they've used data going so far back. Like they have the true Skynet super smart machine that's taken over. They found some secret sauce through their research. And honestly, systematic macro trading is just crazy. Like that's so difficult, at least in my mind, because I don't understand it as well, I guess. And you know, most of the guys you read about in Market Wizards like Druck and Soros, that was all discretionary macro bets. They had a system like trading rules, you know, but they didn't have some machine like Bridgewater has now. But I guess that's why Bridgewater is the number one most successful hedge fund that's made the most money ever. And if you think about it, everything can be systemized, right? Even human behavior, if you have enough data. So why couldn't geopolitical and macro forces and all that stuff be systemized too, predicting it? Because it's all human psychology, right? On a grander scale. And supposedly Bridgewater figured it out. I don't know. They do make a lot of money. That's Big Daddy Dalio for you. But okay, hopefully now we have a better base to work from in these future videos. We know what the algorithms are actually doing. Next video, let's get into some machine learning. I think that's the next topic. We'll see. Comment down below though with what you think about all this algorithmic trading and stuff and AI and all these things. Are they gonna push us out of the market as human investors? What's gonna happen? Let me know down in the comments. And if you wanna make yourself more robotic with less emotion, download this FOMO trading guide. It'll teach you some techniques you can use to control your emotions because you know these robots don't have emotions. Well, you know, this guy is smiling, so. Ah, but he's also on fire, so you can't trust that. Why does the Terminator have teeth? I'm not sure. Just aesthetically pleasing, I guess. But grab that guide, it's free. There's links for it everywhere. And also subscribe to this channel so you see that next video coming out about algorithmic trading. Hit that bell too so you get an email notification when it comes out and we're publishing videos seven days a week come hang out with us we have so much fun you can make a comment you could smash a like you can make a comment on someone else's comment you can make a joke you can do what you want it's a great time subscribe join the community be part of the fallible people and stay fallible i'll talk to you in the next video bye